What is up guys, I'm Rick Kakis, and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, unveiling official information. And so, let's get started. And of course, the big thing to happen since the last TWAB was the release of the Vault of Glass raid over the weekend. And of course, with the release of a new raid, we have a world's first race. So huge congratulations to Clan Elysium, who finished world's first with a pretty wide margin as well. And for all of you guys out there who may have tried it day one and weren't able to get the completion, remember that contest mode was active for that day one, so you were treated 20 levels below what you really were, and therefore it's now substantially easier than it was that very first release day and I've also made a guide going over every single encounter all the mechanics recommended loadout secret chest guys check that out it's linked up above this is absolutely a piece of content you want to do not only is vault of glass actually free to all players so you do not need to purchase a season of the splicer to go in and play it but it also has some fantastic weapons the fate bringer hand cannon is getting a ton of attention I did a video yesterday on the uh, raid snipe rifle which turns out to be one of of, if not the best damage outputting snipers for PvE in the entire game thanks to its god roll. So absolutely hop in the Vault of Glass if you can. Check those LFGs, it is worth it. It only takes one team, it only takes one good team to get a ton of fantastic loot. But moving on from there, Bungie revealed a bunch of new information, especially talking about how stasis is going to be affected in the upcoming meta. And guys, this is a big one. They bring forth Sandbox lead Kevin Yanes to talk about how Stasis has taken over PvP. He does say that we agree with many in the PvP community to say that Stasis is too dominant in the Crucible for too little effort or skill required. Now, first off, Bungie has a section called I Need a Weapon, where they explain that gunplay has taken a backseat to ability spam, saying that uh, for the future of Guardian versus Guardian combat, it boiled down to a few key pillars. Weapons are the primary way players engage with combat, non-super abilities accentuate or augment the combat, but should rarely solve an encounter by themselves, and abilities have clear strengths, weaknesses, and counterplay. Build crafting is rewarding with the moment-to-moment -moment combat loop of Destiny. They say behind the scenes, we've been executing on these pillars by planning out a roadmap of patches that we believe will not only get stasis to where it needs to be for PvP, but also sets us up to shift the PvP combat sandbox in a meaningful way towards more gunplay. So less ability spam, more actually having to use your guns. But of course, Bungie has a track record of saying they're gonna do stuff and then either not actually doing it or taking a hot minute to get it done. So they actually lay out this timeline for patches. They say our first patch in this roadmap uh, was released in March and was in development separately alongside season 14. Unfortunately, due to pieces already moving at the time, some of the changes uh, that were made buffed stasis. For example, you can't Icarus dash out of being slowed, I believe, which you could before. However, the next patch is actually a hot fix hitting next week, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But after that patch hits, Bungie says they're going to put their heads down and focus on the next big patch that's going to go live with Season 15, which is the next season that launches around August 24th. So that is a while away, however, they say this is going to be a big patch that's going to focus on buffing the light subclasses so they can actually have a chance to compete with Stasis. Then they say after season 15, obviously things are a bit more nebulous, they're early in development for those changes, but they're going to look at ability, energy, economy, and regeneration of abilities across the board. Interestingly, Bungie ends with, after that we'll be taking a long hard look at the Void, Solar, and Arc subclasses to re-examine each subclass path and how they fit into the combat sandbox. So, to me, re-examine, taking a hard look, I would really hope Bungie is hinting to the fact that light subclasses are going to be remade at some point after season 15 into the framework of what the stasis subclasses are. So you'll have aspects and fragments now for light subclasses, giving them way more customization and likely much more power as well. 
Okay, so I mentioned a hotfix going live next week. It's actually going to be Thursday, June 3rd. And again, these were originally scheduled for season 15, but Bungie moved them quite a bit forward to ease the pain of stasis. Here's what's happening. So for general stasis, the freeze ability, they reduce the duration of all non-super freezes versus players to 1.5 seconds. So this freeze is too short to break out of. So breaking out is now only possible when frozen by a super. So consider the Warlock melee ability. I think that one had the 1.35 second freeze. Still certainly enough time to get a kill on a frozen op opponent. Freeze is still going to be very good, but don't expect to be frozen for like five seconds if you have a Warlock Rift, for example or you get hit by a stasis warlock rift, you know what I mean. Also, they reduced special weapon, heavy weapon, and light ability bonus damage versus frozen players from plus 50% to plus five percent so you're no longer going to be able to like one shot body with a sniper on a frozen opponent you're going to have to shoot quite a few more times additionally for stasis slow it no longer reduces weapon accuracy it now increases the weapon flinch when under fire and it no longer suppresses the class ability and air moves for example icarus dash but there's a known issue, the Stormcaller's Ionic Blink is still suppressed, they're going to address that later. And they reduced the movement speed penalty uh, while slowed by around 20%. So that is huge. Freezing someone is no longer a death sentence because it makes your bullets go completely sideways. You're now going to be able to, if someone just freezes you, or sorry, slows you while you're looking at them, you can just gun them down. Moving on from there, the Whisper of Hedron's Fragment. So it no longer increases weapon damage after freezing. It now increases weapon stability, weapon aim assist, mobility, resilience, and recovery after freezing. So general buffs, but it no longer is going to let you two tap, for example, with a 120 after freezing someone. Also, the Whisper of Rhyme Fragments no longer provides an overshield while in super. The Cold Snap Grenade. So Seeker no longer tracks targets after initial target acquisition. Then they increase arming duration before Seeker spawns from 0.3 seconds to 0.8 seconds. They reduce the uh, detonation radius versus players from 3 meters to 1.5 meters, so halved. It now bounces off walls and detonates on the ground as well. So Cold Snap is getting a huge nerf. Moving on from there to the more specific subclasses, the Titan Behemoth. Looking at recent gameplay data, the Behemoth generally has the highest win rate out of any subclass in most 6v6 game modes and is also among the strongest in 3v3 game modes. So, as a result, for Shiver Strike, they reduce the flight speed and distance. They reduce the knockback versus players. And they removed slow detonation on player impact. For Cryoclasm, now requires the Titan to sprint for 1.25 seconds before activation when not in super. And they remove the cooldown. So that's a big change as well. For Howl of the Storm, reduce the angle of initial freeze slash damage cone. They reduce the crystal creation freezing radius. They slow down the sequence of crystal formation to allow victims more opportunity to escape. And it now spawns a small crystal on walls if performed into walls. And then for Glacial Quake, they reduce the heavy slam vertical freeze range versus players and reduce the damage resistance from 50% to 47%. So Behemoth Titans, they're getting a pretty substantial downgrade, but hey, that's not all. Next up, we have the Hunter Revenant. So for Withering Blade, they reduce the slow duration versus players from 2.5 seconds down to 1.5 seconds. And they reduce the Whisper of Durance slow duration extension versus players from 2 seconds to 0 0.5 seconds. They reduce damage versus players uh, from 65 to 45. After one bounce, they reduced it further down to 30 damage. And they reduce the projectile uh, speed by 10%. And they reduce the tracking after bouncing on a wall. Huge nerf to that melee ability. Then for Winter's Shroud, they reduce the slow duration versus players from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. And they reduce the Whisper of Durance slow duration extension again from 2 down to 0.5 seconds. For Touch of Winter, Cold Snap 
Seeker no longer has increased movement speed or travel distance. Cold Snap Seeker now spawns a small stasis crystal on detonation. So that's been nerfed quite a bit. Expect to see stasis hunters probably still using that aspect, but instead moving to the other two grenades. Moving on from there, we have the Shade Binder. So, for Penumbral Blast, they reduce the tracking and proximity detonation size and tracking versus players. They reduce the freeze radius versus players while impacting the environment from 2.7 meters to 1.5 meters. For Ice Flare Bolts, Seeker now only chains once when spawned from an enemy player. That's a big change. For Winter's Wrath, the freezing projectile tracking now ramps down uh, to zero after two seconds of light so you're not going to be able to track people like 360 degrees around corners and stuff and whew, those are all of the stasis changes and holy crap this is the biggest nerf to stasis i think we've really ever seen every subclass is hit stasis abilities freezing slow in general is hit quite a bit i'm sure some people who main stasis which is almost everyone may be upset by seeing their favorite subclasses uh, you know get hit pretty hard but i welcome this change stasis has been you know the s plus tier thing to use in the meta for so long it's going to be really nice to actually have people utilize some more light subclasses from time to time the meta needs to change every once in a while and stasis has reigned on top for far too long in my opinion moving on from there to the expunge mission so there was definitely some confusion around this mission because it's listed on the calendar as a weekly pinnacle mission every single week but players did it and found out I don't even get a pinnacle reward it turns out yeah you don't Bungie just jabated us all and what you can expect for the first four weeks is a piece of high stat roll uh, armor. But starting June 15th, a new Pinnacle Activity Challenge will roll out connected to the Expunge mission, providing an additional Pinnacle reward source. So that's when you can actually get your Pinnacle from the weekly Pinnacle mission. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.